If you go to a local game store that supports flesh and blood, you will likely be able to request a Nira welcome deck. In an ancient article on pathtcg.com, you can read about how the deck is a product purpose made for a fast and fun introductory experience. But there's more to it. Behind its simplicity lies the power of one of the most feared heroes in Blitz. Welcome to Magic Omens. I'm Haroe, and today we'll delve into what makes Ira so strong, how to build her and learn her basic strategy. Ira, Crimson Haze, is Flesh and Blood's first hero, and currently has no adult version. She has the standard 4 intellect and 20 health, with a very straightforward ability. Our second attack gains 1 power. It might sound unimpactful, but this bit of free value adds up turn after turn, and often makes attacks difficult to block nicely. Ira's weapon in the Welcome deck is Edge of Autumn, which has an easy upgrade in the form of Harmonized Kodachis in Welcome to Wraith. Being one-handed, they can make use of Ira's ability on their own, but their conditional Gogan imposes a deck building restriction. Cards we pitch will have to cost zero. Assuming they're blue, two Kodachis will spend two resources, leaving one resource for another attack. Accordingly, many attacks in this deck will cost one or zero resources, making the usual turn require two cards and look like this. Kodachi for one, Kodachi for two, Torrent of Tempo for five. This makes two cards Ira's preferred hand size, leaving two cards available for blocking. The remainder of the deck will be a few brilliant defensive cards ninjas have access to. It's worth noting Ira can make use of four or even five card hands when attacking, but it is difficult to achieve the same level of efficiency in terms of damage dealt per card spent that Ira already has with two cards. As such, her strategy relies on consistent value over time, while still having the option of a massive turn with some common cards. Now let's look at the cards we can snatch from the Welcome deck. Torrent of Tempo Red suits all our needs. 5 power for 1 resource, blocks for 3, and potentially has Gorgon. Flying Kick Red is not a standard attack, as it costs 2, but this is easily accommodated for. Scar for a Scar Red features Ira in its art, and quite fittingly strikes back with Vengeance. We'll put a few more cards to the side, and use them as replacements for slightly better cards if necessary. First and most important card from Welcome to Wraith is Flick Flack. It does a zero cost defense reaction that buffs the defense of the next blocking card if it has the combo keyword. In classic ninja decks, combo cards are used together to form devastating attack chains, but in Ira, we'll include multiple combo cards specifically to draw the maximum defense out of Flick Flax. Springboard Somersault or Red Sing Below and Fate for Scene can replace a few copies. Continuing with the attacks, Life for Life Red works like Scar for a Scar, compensating its one cost with a non hit effect. It returns Precious Life. Snatch Red has no go again, but provides another on-hit effect. These two cards are a real pain to block when powered up by Ira's ability. Electap Red is classic ninja go again, while Push the Point Red abuses the fact people are unlikely to block the first Kodachi for 1 and hits for 7 immediately afterwards. Pounding Gale and Hurricane Technique are super rares that offer good damage for their cost, while still having combo to benefit from Flick Flax. Cluster Fist and Blackout Kick in red can serve as their replacements. That's plenty of attacks that we'll need to fuel with some blue cards. Usual target number for Ira is 14 or 15 blues, ensuring a blue card in every hand, as that's all this deck needs for a turn. We already have two blues in Flick Flax, and let's remember, we want the rest to cause zero so that Kodachis have go again. We would also like them to have the combo keyword to block well with Flick Flax. Among commons and rares, there's a limited number of such cards, and they are shown on screen. Their abilities don't matter, with the exception of Rising Nithrust that connects the combo line of Flip Tap and Hurricane Technique, and might actually come up and play. To fill the last two spots, Soul Beat Strike Blue will do just fine. Other options and potential replacements are also shown on screen, with the ones blocking 3 being a generally safer choice. Finally, the deck is complete with two Red Razor Reflexes, and two red sigils of solace. Razors are a great finisher and can extend the combat chain, while sigil is invaluable in multiple matchups, soaking up the bits of damage that went through. Equipment is not the focus of our strategy, and serves a supporting goal. Iron Rot Helm helps hands with no defense reactions. Blood Rot Brocade abuses the fact Kodachi for 1 is rarely blocked to pay for a flying kick turn with one bull. Breaking scales offer more armor, and a small buff to combo attacks. 
Ideally, we'll use this on a pounding gale or a hurricane technique after blocking with the armor. Snapdragon Scalers present the only choice for go wide decks and can help connect a combo line. Nowrun Hood, Robe and Gloves protect us from Arcane in a deck that has a decent number of blues to pitch. Zephyr Needle comes in against matchups that are expected to play no defense reactions. On second attack, Yira's bonus makes it attack for 3, meaning the ordinary 3 ball cards won't break it. Overall, the list has 22 reds, 4 yellows and 14 blues. 8 cards serve a defensive purpose, 12 are pitch and the rest are threats. We have plenty of cards at block 2, so in a meta featuring less Kano and more Dorinthia and other aggressive decks, a couple of those can be swapped out for defense reactions, such as Red Sing Below or Red Fate for Scene. Before going on to the deck's main plays, here's a preview of a full power version. What makes Ira so powerful is that there are no standout plays in the deck. She offers good damage every turn she can attack and amazing defense whenever she has flick flags. She is great for new players because she comes pre-packaged with a simple and easy to follow plan. Having a plan is half the battle in flesh and blood, and ours is as follows. Block with two cards from hand, keeping a blue and a one cost attack. Then attack with the remaining two cards. This deals between 7 and 10 damage after blocking between 6 and 9 damage. Other heroes simply cannot match this efficiency in a format as quick as Blitz. Playing on one card hands is just as easy. We use 3 cards to block, then arsenal a red attack. We block with 3 cards again, but now keep a blue to pay for our following turn. It's not flashy by any means, and there can be a few turns where we even block with all 4 cards, but patient play like this gets the job done when the opponent has tempo. That said, the more 2 ball cards we have, the less feasible it is to play on one card hands, as blocking becomes unreliable. Playing hands of 3 or more cards is reserved for big turns, or matchups where we cannot give an inch of space. Ira is a control deck by nature, and we don't want to get punished for our greediness by defense reactions. This becomes most obvious in the mirror, where Flick Flax can shut the whole turn down. A good thing about larger hands, especially when we have tempo, is the ability to afford ourselves a moment to think and pitch a red card alongside the blue, preserving threats. This lessens the risk of fatigue by players committed to blocking. Most heroes present no trouble for Ira. Blindly following the idea of blocking with two cards and using two to attack is enough to gradually create advantage and win just because our hero is so strong. Runeblade powerhouses of Chain and Briar will come swinging in full force, and the best way to win is to return the favor. We're bringing Needle to push damage efficiency to the max. Such games will be decided in the first 2 or 3 turns of aggressive play anyways, so we're happy to trade a Needle for Chain's Carrion Husk or a card from Briar's hand. Attacking with Needle isn't a must if Briar has multiple embodiments of Earth. It boils down to knowing when the push to force cards out of her hand is required. This aggressively slanted list still has Boos available to pitch away against Kano. We're equipping 3 Nowrun and a Needle to maximize pressure, as Kanos don't tend to run defense reactions. Arsenaling a Sigil instead of playing it as soon as possible can decide the game if Kano gives up on defense in an attempt to deal lethal damage. Appeal of Blitz Viscerary to many is his amazing Ira matchup. He simply collects Runchance for 6 to 7 turns, blocks Skeleta, uses Sonata, and comes in with a turn dealing 40 plus damage, killing us on the spot. There's not much Ira can do against such a strategy, and our goal is to play as aggressive as possible and hope Viserai has really poor luck with Sonata. Ultim has a very realistic shot at fatiguing Ira. He can block up to 4 damage per turn without losing a card from his deck, and the threat of Ice React forces us to keep an extra card in hand so our attacks don't stop on the second Kodachi. Winter's Veil producing Frostbites can make this even harder, but luckily we have the blues to pay the taxes. Setting up 5 card turns is key to winning, be it through pitch stacking or on a turn to turn basis. Dorinthia, Bravo and Reiner all require a similar strategy. 
we are prioritizing getting zero-cost defense reactions into Arsenal to help against Reprise, Dominate and Intimidate respectively. If none of those are available, Arsenaling a Gogan attack lets us prepare big turns of our own. Dash, Aggression in Blitz is quite different from her control playstyle in Classic Constructed. It's possible to race her with Needle equipped, but a perfectly valid strategy is committing to fatiguing her through blocks from the very start. Boosting has her burn through her deck quickly, and her attempts at dealing damage with multiple attacks are thwarted by Flick Flax. When she has an off turn, we hit back hard quite easily. Mirror is a test of skill and patience. Bluffing a strong attack with Flick Flack on the second Kodachi, reading the bluff and attacking anyways, Conserving Razor Reflexes for after defense reactions are gone, there are plenty of things to pay attention to. It is generally safe to say the better player will win the mirror, making it a good indicator of progress in Flesh and Blood. It rewards consistently making good basic decisions. With a field of advantageous matchups, Ira should help you win many games in Armories. Let's go over a few more tips to help you reach the top quicker. Our attacks have 1, 2, 4 or 5 power, so the deck is already good at blading damage through cards that block for 3. Thanks to Ira's ability, changing the attack sequence can bleed damage through even when the opponent has a 4 block defense reaction. Playing a grindy matchup can feel really good and fun until we find ourselves drawing into 4 blues, losing all tempo and ultimately the game. All because every turn we pitch the blue without a worry in the world. To avoid this, we need to pitch a red card or two every 3 or 4 turns. This is most easily done when attacking with flying kick, or having a 4 card turn, but it can also be accomplished through weak turns where we block with 2 cards, pitch a red to Kodachi for 1, and arsenal a defense reaction. Additionally, Rising Nithrust is inevitably getting pitched as a blue. Noting when this happens is rewarded if we draw a leg tap or a hurricane technique in the next couple of turns. If we pitch either, we can draw the combo later in the game to help close it out. When the health gets low, throwing out a Razor on the first unblocked Kodachi can be very tempting, but is heavily punished with a Sync or Fate in response. Hold Razor for the last possible attack and try to force the opponent to use a defense reaction on a normal attack before you Razor something else. Ira is an invaluable hero to master as she is created on the most basic game principles. Getting better at ERA makes you better at flesh and blood. If you're new to the game, her simple game plan allows you to focus on improving yourself without getting tangled up in hero-specific mechanics. I hope you consider this video helpful and will find success in armories and bigger events down the line. Thanks for watching.